banger. And today we break down Herms. I spoke to my boy Chris. Y'all know him as Mr. Grow It. Mr. Grow hit me the other day and he said, Zah, man, we did that interview some years ago and you broke down hermaphrodites to me and my team, but for some reason they still have a lot of questions. They still didn't really grasp the concept yet. And I would love for you to put out a more in-depth video on Herms. Come on, man. You know I got you. Let's get straight to it. Get it. Like, comment, share, subscribe, you hear me? Yeah, you know it. Yeah. As long as they printin' that shit, me and my niggas gon' sprint to that shit. Low key bread though. When the beef go up, niggas tip tough. I feel like I'm the hottest. Young nigga cocky, I'm tryna be modest. Chasing that bag for my son, that's a promise. You could get banged for them bust like I'm Jonas. I'm at niggas next like I'm Isaiah Thomas. I'm bumming braids, a shame on you. If you ever played me, don't got the energy, I was too Alright, so our plants, our plants are naturally diaceous. Diaceous meaning you have a male and then you have a female, right? which is natural for reproduction. In some cases, they're also monoecious. Monoecious is when you have a male and female parts on the same plant. And you guys are very familiar with having male and female parts on the same plant. We know that to be hermaphroditism or a hermaphrodite or a hermy, uh, whatever you wanna call it, right? But today, I really wanna drive it home. We gotta drive it home. We got to get the community strong foundation and hermaphrodites, identifying them visually and understanding the different agendas that each hermaphrodite carry. Now, we did a little bit on hermaphrodites in one of my previous videos, but today I really want to give you all a good, strong foundation. So the first one, first herm we talk about, stamen, right? Stamen is... Nanners or nanners, you want to call them. This is a female that is creating pollen for herself. She's self-pollinating, and she does it for mainly two different reasons. Um, ultimately, always under the some sort of level of stress. Um, so you figure she is purposely pollinating herself because. She feels stress either coming from your lights or coming from the heat or whatever is causing this environmental stress. She feels as though it's enough pressure and stress on her that she may not survive. So she wants to preserve her genetics for the following season. And in order to do that, she pollinates herself. This is where nanners come from. This is where, But the thing about them visually they're not very easy to identify you got to be really looking close and looking hard um, especially depending on her agenda for creating pollen right generally um if a female is very stressed thinking that her life may end at some point and she needs to preserve her genetics you're going to find that she hides she's very stealthy and subtle about how she produces her pollen she doesn't want to everybody to know about it right it's kind of a hidden thing kind of she keeping it to herself this is survival of the fittest right she's going to ensure that her babies make it to the next season even if she doesn't you got to respect that that is nanners or stamen right stamen is the exact same thing that produces pollen inside of a pollen sac so the only difference between uh, when a female produces her own pollen, there is no sac. It's just the stamen, and it's kind of hidden, right? Now, let's flip over a bit. Natural herm. Natural herm is genetically coded. There is no erasing it completely out the gene pool. It's coded there. What you can do is uh, breed it to recessive. Um, but there is no removing it completely out the gene pool. And that's all right, because natural herms are here for a reason, too. They have their own agenda, and you must understand what it is, because it's going to help you move forward from preventing them from happening and identifying it early on. So a natural herm is going to have balls, pollen sacs, balls swinging, right? We talked about that before. Male parts up here, female parts down here on the same plant. But it's completely different. You're going to see a section of pistols which is female parts, and then you'll see a section where there's male parts, balls. Now, this is a completely different agenda. Remember, 
the nanners and the female who was self-pollinating, she did it because of stress. She also decided to create nanners because you may have pushed her too long past the her ideal harvest time, right? Or when she felt as though she should have already been pollinated by now. Um, if you go past a certain time, a female will start to be concerned, which is also a form of stress. She'll start to be concerned that she hasn't been pollinated yet. That's a problem. How else am I going to preserve my genetics for the following season if there's no males or pollen in the vicinity? That's stressful on a female. So immediately, she starts to create her own stamen, right? And those stamen, same agenda, hidden, not, not so much out. I mean, at some point, you might see uh, 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 nanners or little banana shaped, but usually they're real small, camouflage or completely tucked off inside the buds. That's because it's not meant for everybody to know. It's her business. She's on a mission to preserve and survive. She's on a mission. Now, let's flip back over. The natural herm balls out. He don't care what you, yo, he don't care who in the room. Balls out. You hear me? And we got female parts here as well, but we don't care because just like a natural male, I got one agenda. And that one agenda is to pollinate all females within three mile radius. That's my only agenda. So it'll help you to understand the purpose of pollen a sack around stamen. It's only one purpose to have a sack, and that's to store and collect the pollen. We store it and collect the pollen. That's why we got to have that ball around the stamen. The same stamen that'll be tucked off inside of the female bud in, in, in the case of a, 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 a female pollinator herself. Same exact uh, uh, reproductive organ, but it's just the difference is now it's got a sack around it. And that sack is giving this plant the ability to store and collect pollen. So once he stores and collects it to a certain, uh, uh, to his likeliness, then he boop, opens and releases. And that's it. That's it. Remember, natural herms are genetically coded. You can, you can selectively breed them into recessive so they don't show at all. So it's so far back dormant in the gene pool, you'll, it'll never be a problem. And when it comes to stamen, stamen is stress-related, which is a direct sign of weakness. You can remove weakness. You, weakness can be removed out of your gene pool. So it's, it's really as simple as um, if you remove weakness, then your plants won't be able to stress uh, to, to cause hermaphroditism because you've already removed the weakness. That's why stress testing, strength testing, all of these things are so important before you move to market. I guarantee you it's nothing that you can do to dead ops, Hades, any strain that I've ever created to make it herm. Nothing, because I've already selectively bred out any weakness before I ever let you touch it. You understand? That's a guaranteed fact. I put any amount of money, I bet anything on it. It's nothing you can do to any of my plants that'll make them create stamen. It's just, that's just weakness. That's just, and don't ever let a breeder blame you for stress-related herms, because that weakness should have been bred out before it came to me. So don't tell me it was my light that did it. Don't tell me it was the heat too high. Don't tell me my tent was too small. I don't want to hear none of that. Don't tell me nothing about my environment when I know it's your responsibility as the breeder to remove weakness out of the gene pool before it goes to market. And that's just a fact. So those are the two main herms. Let's go over them real quick. The stamen is a self-pollination, basically related directly to stress. When females stress enough, they'll create pollen for themselves to preserve their genetics for the following season. Natural herms are genetically coded. They have a different agenda. They don't hide, they got balls out, and they're here to collect, store pollen, and release it so they can pollinate females up to three miles away with a one pollen grain. And the beautiful thing about a natural herm is though, although it is genetically coded, um, you can, selectively breed it into recessive status. So that, that way it's, it's so far back, you'll, you'll never see it or it'll never cause you an issue. So those are the two primary herms. Now last time there was a bonus question in the other video. What about the third herm? 
Zaza told us there was three Herms, and a lot of you guys in the comments got it right. So congratulations to you guys. It is what we know as the bisexual bud or mixed sex bud. Bisexual bud or mixed sex bud. They they use these terminology in the botany world, in the world of botany. You'll always hear them refer to a reversal. That's the third herm, a reversal, where you're going to actually see female and male parts in the same exact cluster. Totally different. A female and male parts in the same exact cluster on the same plant. So this is different from the first two herms we identified. Now we're looking at three different herms, and this one is man-made. Technically, we use some sort of reversal spray. There are three primary sprays we can alter hormones and reverse plants with. One, colloidal silver. The one I always recommend for the newbies, colloidal silver. Um, it is always readily available. You can get it from most health food, Amazon, you know, all over the place you can get it. And at a strength of about 30 ppms is the perfect concentration for reversing a, a female plant. So, um, and if you're curious about the science behind how it takes place, copper binds with ethylene inside of a female plant. And that's, um, that's what creates female parts. When copper binds with ethylene, a hormone within a female cannabis plant. Now, when we spray silver, slowing down and stopping the production of ethylene, you're only left with copper and silver. When copper and silver attempt to bind, it doesn't work and you end up in turn with male parts. So that is my recommendation. If you are looking to get yourself into some um, reversals, then I would recommend starting off with a colloidal silver. Number two, silver thiosulfate or STS spray. You're going to need to mix some chemicals. This is a lot more advanced than just your average colloidal silver. So you're going to have to mix part A with part B and you're using some scientific chemicals, acids, things like that. So you're going to want to do your research, take your time, and um, make sure you surround yourself around the proper knowledge before just playing around with chemicals, all right? But that's silver thiosulfate. And third on the list, gibrilic acid. Also, uh, uh, manipulating hormones within the plant. That is the third most advanced. So start within that, you know, colloidal silver. Then eventually, if you want to, you know, step your game up, then go to STS spray or silver thiosulfate. And then, you know, if you really want to go crazy and be a scientist, you can get some gibberellic acid and really go crazy. But um, that is how you're going to make your third herm, man. That's how you're going to do it. You're going to make your third herm, man. All right, and you're going to do it using one of those three sprays, man, and you'll end up with a bisexual or a mixed sex bud, as we call it. And those are the three herms, man. Stamen, closely related to stress. Balls, natural herm, right? And mixed sex buds, which is a reversal by human intervention. And um, I hope that broke it down for you, man. You hear me? On the next video... We breaking down S1s and really, S1s is a lot more complex than y'all think, but I'm putting a real nice video together for y'all, man. Maybe even a little doodle cartoon thingy going on, man. But uh, I appreciate y'all. I'm excited. Shout out to my brother Tony Trinity again. He's still making waves. That Ops OG took first place in the Trinidadian Cannabis Cup. Gold. We took home the gold, man. Shout out to y'all, man. We appreciate the support. You know what it's about. Q-C-E. Quality. Community. And education. We bring quality to this community through education. Make sure you visit that website, zazagenetics.com. The zombie sale is still running up. I decided to keep it up there. And visit acinfinity.com. Use code Team Zaza for a discount at checkout, man. Much love to all the supporters. Much love to the new generation of breeders that's coming through this community and pushing that agenda. I hear y'all. I see y'all. Catch me in the Discord, 9 p.m. We in there every night. Last night, we was learning the Heidi Weinberg equilibrium. Now, you might have heard one of my, my, my older videos, and I mentioned if you don't know the Heidi Weinberg equilibrium, you need to go learn your stuff. But understand that P squared plus 2PQ plus 
Q squared equals one, and it always will equal one, man. Shout out to y'all, man. Team Zaza, I love you. I'm out of here. Don't forget to comment, like, and if you didn't already, hit that notification bell and subscribe, man, because that's how you stay in tune every time I drop a video. Much love, man. I'm out of here. The money ain't stopping, so I ain't easy. So I ain't easy. Hot boy got a feed. Boy got a feed. Got drank by the lead. Got drank by the lead. In the grill, I'm a lead. The money ain't stopping, so I ain't easy. So I ain't easy. Hot boy got a feed. Hot boy got a feed. Big bees, I'm a bleed. Big bees, I'm a bleed. Hot boy keep it heated. The money ain't stopping, so I ain't easy. So I ain't easy. Hot boy got a feed. Boy got a feed. Got drank by the lead. Got drank by the lead. In the grill, I'm a lead. The money ain't stopping, so I ain't easy. So I ain't easy. Hot boy got a feed. Hot boy got a feed.